Let's talk about a few more essential modeling tools that you need to know in order to really start modeling. Unlike the last few though, these aren't found in the toolbar. The first one I want to show you is subdivide. I'll hit tab to go into edit mode on the default cube. And then immediately while everything is still selected, let's go to edge and subdivide. This tool simply cuts everything in half, but even though it's simple, it can be incredibly powerful. Let's see how it acts with different types of selections. First of all, if you have a single vertex or a couple vertices that aren't connected, then subdividing won't do anything because a vertex is just a point in space and you can't split that in two. So this is really only something that we do to edges. If I select an edge or two connected vertices that make up an edge and then go to edge and subdivide, then I'll get a new vertex right in the middle. If I go down to the bottom left in the redo panel, I can also increase the number of cuts. However, if I do this on two edges that are on opposite sides of a face, which in this case I need to select in edge select mode, because if I select all four of these vertices, then the whole face gets selected. So I'll hit two on the number row to go to edge select and then select the top edge as well as the bottom. And then instead of always going to the edge menu, I can also just right click and choose subdivide since it's in all of the vertex edge and face context menus right at the top. Now, when I subdivide these edges, which are part of the same face, not only does it place vertices right in the middle, it also connects those vertices with a new edge. This is actually very similar to inserting an edge loop. In fact, if I hold control alt and then click on an edge to select an edge ring and then right click and subdivide, then the result is exactly the same as inserting an edge loop. Most of the time, there's no real benefit of doing things this way since it's just easier to hit control R and add one that way. However, because you're specifying exactly which edges the new cut should go through, it allows you to make a loop straight through n-gons and triangles, which you can't do with the loop cut tool. So here we have an n-gon on the top of this cube because I introduced this vertex here, which gives it more than four sides. And if I hit control R to add an edge loop, then that's gonna stop right there at the top. However, if I were to go to edge select mode, alt to left click, and then specify the path that I want it to take, then I can just right click and subdivide, and add my loop cut that way. There's also an option to subdivide an edge ring. So I'll hit control alt and then left click to select an edge ring, then go to edge and subdivide edge ring, which works similarly, but you have more blending options. Those are some more advanced use cases of subdividing though, and mostly for the people who are switching from other software. If you're a beginner, all I need you to remember is that subdividing an edge cuts it in half. This is also true of faces because a face is just made up of four sides, so if I were to select one and then right click and subdivide, then it'll subdivide all four edges as well as cut right through. You can subdivide triangles as well. The only thing that you can't subdivide is n-gons because Blender can't really know how to slice it up. You'll have to use your knife tool for that one. The next tool that I'd like to look at is actually one that we already talked about, but I didn't talk about the hotkey and how useful it actually is. In the toolbar under the extrude tool, we had extrude to cursor, which allows us to select something and then just left click to extrude right to wherever we click. What I didn't say is that we can actually do this same thing by control right clicking in any other tool. So if I go to my box select tool, I can just hold control and then right click and extrude to my cursor. Now, when it comes to faces, this isn't as helpful, but when it comes to vertices, it's incredibly powerful. I'll actually go ahead and select everything with A and then delete all my vertices and then go into top view so that we can draw out a new shape and it'll be completely flat. If absolutely nothing is selected and we're just clicking in empty space, then the control right click hotkey will create a new vertex at our cursor. So in this case, I'll just make a triangle as an example. So I'll go to the bottom right corner, control right click, place a vertex, and we're in face select mode. So even though it looks like nothing happened, we actually just can't see it yet. So I'll switch to vertex select mode by hitting one on the number row. There we go. And then let's make sure that that vertex is still selected so that the new one gets connected to it. And then I'll go to the top, control right click, and then I'll go to the bottom corner and control right click. Now our triangle's almost complete, but it's not connected here at the bottom and it's not filled in as a face. To connect these two bottom vertices, we just need to select them and then go up to the vertex menu and choose new edge slash face from vertices, which you can also get to with the hotkey F. So that created a new edge between the vertices, but as the name implies, it can also be used to make faces. So I'll select the whole triangle here and then go to vertex, new edge slash face from vertices. In fact, we don't even need to connect those bottom vertices in order for this to work. I could have just selected this whole thing to begin with and simply hit F. This is actually an incredibly versatile tool when modeling. In my opinion, the F hotkey in Blender is one of its superpowers. A couple other cool things that it can do that you might want to know if you're coming from other modeling software is that if you have a bunch of edges, I'll just take this vertex here at the bottom and then hit E to extrude. And then I'll take the top one, also E to extrude. 
and then I'll take both of these at the same time so that I'm just extruding the vertices and no edges in between them. Let's say we have some sort of shape like this. Well, what the F hotkey can actually do is instead of just selecting everything and then using F, which will work, it'll just make a big end gone, you can also select this edge here at the bottom and simply tap F. It's smart and knows how to follow along those rails, so I can just keep tapping F to fill in that whole area. This is really helpful, for example, when doing retopology. Another function of this tool is making any selection of faces into an end gone. So I can hit 3 to go to face select mode, select all of these faces up here, and then if I hit F, Again, make edge or face from vertices, then that whole area will be converted into an end gone. Oftentimes when I use this tool in tutorials, I say hit F to fill because that makes it so much easier to remember. But one of the quirky things is, is that this isn't actually the fill tool. It's the make edge slash face from vertices tool, which is kind of a mouthful and hard to remember. The actual fill tool just takes a surrounding area and fills it in with triangles. So if I delete only faces here, such that I'm left with the edges and vertices, I can select all of these and then go to Face and Fill, or use the hotkey Alt-F. Now this can only fill it in with triangles, so its usefulness is limited, but it can be helpful sometimes. If you want to fill it in with quads, then instead go to Face and choose Grid Fill. That's the one you're going to want more often than not. Now there's one mistake that I see students make all the time when it comes to the Make Edge Slash Face From Vertex tool, and it constantly causes them problems. It's that the tool only makes an edge or face between the connected vertices, and it does not cut through faces. It's not a knife tool. So for example, if I select this vertex down here and that one up there, and I want to slice right in between them, at this point, your intuition might be to hit F and create an edge that goes from one to the other. However, notice that there are no vertices that were created along these edges, which means that what I actually created was kind of a mess. Because if I pull these up, you can see that I just have the string from one to the other, which is probably not what I wanted. And it can be very confusing because then if you go to face to select mode and you want to select this face here, well, it selects this entire area because these faces have not been cut in half. So if that happens, go ahead and delete the offending area. In this case, I'll just delete this edge. And instead, if you want to do that same thing, go ahead and use your knife tool. Or you can also use connect vertex path. So I'll go to vertex select mode again and select these same vertices. And then go to vertex and use connect vertex path, which is also the hotkey J. When I do that, it does make the cuts in between, which is exactly what I wanted. Now I can manipulate these faces separately and everything's all connected. The moral of the story here though is just don't use the F hotkey to make any cuts. Now let's take a look at another very common modeling problem and how to solve it. I'll select everything here with A and delete vertices, then shift A and add a new cube. Let's say that I deleted one of these sides and then I took the top face, I'll go into top view here, shift D, duplicate this over, and let's say I made some really cool design on this side and I wanted to connect it back with this first one. Well, I could use the handy F hotkey that we just learned. I could take these two edges and then hit F to make a new face, but I'm still left with these edges right next to each other. What I really want to do is merge them. So that's another thing that we can do to vertices. I'll hit one to go to vertex select mode and to merge these two vertices here at the top, I'll just select both of them and then go to mesh, merge, or I can get to this menu by hitting M. And then we can choose at which point we want to merge them. In this case, I'll just go for at center. Then I'll go to the bottom ones. Take both of these, hit M, and merge at center. I also mentioned in at least a couple of the previous videos that a really common problem is duplicate faces or vertices sitting directly on top of each other. This often happens if somebody selects a face and then hits Shift D to duplicate it and then tries to cancel it using the escape key or the right click without actually going through and hitting Control Z to undo the entire operation. They just canceled the move portion, and so we now have a face that's sitting directly on top of another face. This can also really easily happen with the extrude tool where I can select a face, hit E to extrude, escape to cancel, but that face is still there. Now this can happen in a lot of ways and not just these two, and it always ends up causing a lot of problems. For example, if I wanted to bevel this edge here, well, I could take it and hit control B, but now it's not really working as expected. Nothing's happening. This problem essentially makes all of your tools go a little bit haywire. So the way to fix it would be to select both vertices. In this case, I could zoom in really close, but they're directly on top of each other. So to make sure I'm selecting through and getting both, I'm going to go into X-ray view. Then I'll select that whole area, hit M and merge at center. Now, obviously this would be incredibly tedious to go around and do this for every single vertex, but luckily Blender has a better solution. What we can do is just select the entire area that might have some of those vertices which are directly on top of each other, which are also commonly referred to as doubles, and then hit M to bring up that same merge menu 
but choose the bottom option, which is by distance. Now at the bottom, you can see that we've removed six vertices and our mesh is fixed. Any vertex that's within this threshold from another vertex will get merged with it. Just be careful that it is a bit of a destructive action. So if you had some vertex that's, you know, really close to this one that you actually did want to be separate, and then you just hit A to select everything and merge by distance, then you might be unintentionally merging some vertices that you might not want to. So be careful of what you have selected. Overall, I'd say that merge by distance is the number one thing to do if something's going wrong with your mesh. Coming in at a close second would be recalculating your normals, which we looked at in a previous lesson. Now, if you want to merge a whole lot of vertices all at once, I'll turn off X-ray here, and I'll hit K to go in my knife tool and just make a ton of cuts. Let's say I want to merge a ton of these together. Then what I could do is turn on Auto Merge. That's an option under the Options in the top right of the tool header, right under the Mirror Options. Turn on Auto Merge, and then any vertices which are moved to be directly on top of each other will just automatically get merged. Now, it's really hard to get exactly right on top. Of course, you could increase the threshold here, but the easier option is just to turn on vertex snapping. So I'll go to the header and turn on snapping and switch that from increment to vertex. Now I can just hit G to move this vertex, hover my mouse over the one I want it to snap to, and now this is one single vertex. Again, that's just left click on a vertex, hit G, hover over the one you want to merge it with, and you're done. Again, this is a pretty destructive action and you definitely don't want to be doing it accidentally. So I'd really recommend turning this option off once you're done. Not only is it in the options menu, it's also this icon that looks like two vertices with some force field in between. Go ahead and turn that off and continue modeling. Lastly, I didn't have this one on my list to talk about in this video, but I actually want to show it to you because I get asked about it all the time from people who switch from other software and it's how to loft between loops. So I'll go ahead and delete my mesh here and then hit shift A and simply add a circle. Then to make it easier to see what this is doing, I'll go ahead and select half of these vertices and just delete them and then select everything with A and shift D. Then I can rotate this, shift D, rotate and scale. Essentially, we're just carving a path that we want the new faces to take, which is usually called a loft in other programs. Once I've created this path, then all I need to do is select all of these vertices and then go to edge and bridge edge loops. Not only is this an incredibly fast way to make forms and connect things, it's also really useful for making smooth transitions because we can also increase the number of cuts and change how this is interpolated. All right, well, in the last few lessons, we've covered all of the most essential modeling tools in Blender, but if you're just starting out with 3D modeling, it may all feel a little bit abstract still. You may get how to use each tool individually, but not yet see the bigger picture for how they all come together to create the shapes that you want. That's a much bigger and deeper topic than we have time to get into in the Blender basics, but we also have a free project-based course that you can do after this one, which we'll start talking about exactly that. In the course called Press Start, you'll make this handheld game console, and I'll walk you through every step of the way. After that, we have a ton of modeling content that you can dive into on cgcookie.com, like the Mesh Modeling Fundamentals and the Mesh Modeling Bootcamp, which will bring you all the way from complete beginner to a pretty intermediate level. There are also a ton of other project-based courses from myself, Kent Trammell, and many others available on our website, which will help fill in a lot of knowledge gaps if you've just been learning from YouTube. For now though, I just want you to get comfortable with the tools by making some incredibly basic shapes or even abstract ones. Step one is getting comfortable with the tools in general, and then step two, which comes after this course, is how to use them to create more complex things. Now we've got one more lesson in the modeling section of this course, so practice all of these tools, and then in the next video, we'll talk about how to make some of these same edits non-destructively.